This is a high-level demonstration of the Asset Accountant platform. In this demonstration, I'll be providing an overview of how the system works and an indication of where you can undertake certain tasks. There will be a series of more detailed videos also available on specific actions you can take within the software. When you first log into Asset Accountant, you'll see a list of all the registers that are available to you. So here on the left-hand side of the screen, these are the registers I can see. There are the associated legal entities here, and if you are connected to one of the integration partners that we have, such as Sage or Xero or QuickBooks, it will show you the entity that you are connected to in this screen as well. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will show you a register that is not connected to one of the integration partners that we have. There will be further videos available on how integrations work with each of those other systems. When I first click into a register here, you will see there is a view of the movement for a fixed asset register with the asset groups down the left hand side and the column headings across the top. Up in the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see there are two toggles. The first toggle here gives you the ability to flick between the tax view and the accounts view. We have a number of jurisdictions available for tax views and for accounts you can choose between GAAP or IFRS. And then there is also the ability to select a date period. So in this period, I'm looking at financial year 2023. In Australia, I can also choose month specific months or year to date or current or previous financial years. If I need a custom period for any reason, I can select that at the bottom using the select period dialog at the uh, at the bottom. Across the top here, you can see the, the movement in the book value over the period. If I open up the column here, you can see what that book value is made of at the start of the period. So on the 1st of July 2022, I've got the opening cost and accumulated depreciation. All of these columns open up for additional information, such as with additions, purchases and transfers in and so on, all the way across to the closing book value. You can also open up these asset groups on the left hand side and see a list of all the individual assets. And again, the same information is displayed across the screen for each individual asset, which you can open if you if you need to. Each asset has its own screen, which is full of data and information and actions you can take in relation to that asset. So in this screen here, you can see it's a computer, there's a, there's a description and an asset reference. And then there are three tabs just shown here in the top center of the screen, one for tax, one for accounts, and then some further details, which I'll come into shortly. In the accounts tab here, you can see everything that happens over the full life of this asset. So the past, current, and future transactions and depreciation as they'll be charged. This obviously assumes that there'll be no further actions taken on the asset, but if those are, then they're recorded here. And you can see we keep a full audit trail of everything that happens on each or every action that happens for each asset. Uh, in the details tab, this is where I can set what we call classifications. So these are things like profit centers or cost centers, uh, projects are sometimes included in here. There's no limit to the number of these that you can have. And these will be posted as part of the journals in relation to those assets if you if you choose that. So if you need to post a journal with tracking categories or dimensions, whatever they're called in your accounting system, this is where you set those up with an asset accountant. You can also have as many custom fields as you like. Custom fields are specific text for each asset and you can choose any custom field or any item for a custom field that you would like in relation to that asset. You can also add attachments. So you can upload files from your desktop or you can add a link to a document management system if you'd like to do that also. Within this screen here, there's a number of actions you can take for each asset. So up in the top right hand corner, there are items such as adding a component. So you have a parent child relationship between two assets. You can add quantities to assets, which enables partial sales or partial disposals, or you can add leases to those assets as well. This is also where you would sell or write off assets. There'll be separate videos on each of those if you would like to investigate each of those in any more detail. So from the main asset screen, if I'm using Asset Accountant as a standalone system and not integrated with one of the underlying registers, I can add an asset from here. So this is where I add an asset. And then when you open this, you'll see a screen that populates the information. Again, there'll be a separate video on that. And similarly, you can add a higher purchase or a leased asset or, or even a right of use asset from this drop down box as well. Each asset group here has its own information page. So I can click on the edit button here. And this will show me the asset group for computer equipment. So there's some summary information at the top based on the assets that are currently coded to computer equipment. I can have a parent group in here as well if I would like to have a hierarchy in the fixed asset register. 
And then here is where I'm able to set the default tax and accounts depreciation rates for those particular asset groups. So in this case, if somebody chooses computer equipment, you can see it'll default to five years prime cost for tax and 200, oh sorry, four year diminishing value 200 for accounts. When you add an asset into the system, you are always able to override these as well. The final section in the asset group screen shows where you would map to the general ledger accounts. So in this case here, you're able to add in your specific GL accounts for when the journals are created. When you are integrate, when we have this connected to one of the integration partners, then the, the general ledger, the trial balance is automatically pulled over and you just have to select the relevant account codes from there rather than typing them in. Asset Accountant also supports low value pools in Australia for tax. So you can see here, there's a separate tab for low value pools. This is where we track each year's pool and you can pull in the eligible transfers. There is a page here for importing assets, which I will again create a separate video for if you would like to look at how the asset imports work. And then there is an area here to create journals. So at month end, I'm going to choose to create my journals. So I'm going to create my journal for, let's say I'm going to create my journal for June 2022. That'll create the journal in Asset Accountant. And you can see here the journals are created based on the asset group with the account type, so depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation and so on, with the classifications that you've chosen to have apply to the journals. So I can review that within Asset Accountant. If I'm happy with that journal, I'm able to export that to CSV or an Excel file and then upload that into the accounting system that I want to post the journals to. Finally, there are a number of reports available within Asset Accountant. So from the reports button up on the top right of the asset screen, I can select the report type from here. Uh, in this case, I'll just choose the asset summary for accounts for FY23. I can either download those in a PDF format or a CSV if I want to upload them in a spreadsheet and do some work. And then once I generate that report, the system will create the relevant report based on the settings that you've made. And you can see here, so this is what the PDF looks like for the asset summary. So it's a full list of the assets and the movement in the period that I've selected.